I've owned the property about six years. About 75% of it is devoted to cows and, and livestock in the form of hay and pasture. And then a small percentage is raspberries, which do really well. I was a charter member of the Hilo 4-H Club when I was 10 years old. The property that I'm standing on right now was homesteaded by my great-grandfather in 1873. I moved here to the property uh, with my folks in 1948. And it was a dairy to begin with, and I have great memories of uh, going to the creek. We had uh, tremendous fish runs every year. So whether our ancestors are from this area, or we grew up here, or we just moved here and decided to stay, we all have an affinity towards the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of that is associated with the natural resources that are here. It rains a lot here in the Pacific Northwest, but along with that come streams and rivers and beautiful forests and productive agriculture and our floodplains and also clean and cool water for us to recreate in. Because of the changes we've seen on our landscape, we've done damage to a lot of our streams. They aren't as healthy as they used to be. Water quality, for example, a lot of the streams and rivers in the Puget Sound are not safe for swimming. Too many pollutants. In addition, we have several species of salmon that are now on the endangered species list. And in the Puget Sound region altogether, our salmon populations are about 10% of their historic numbers. We were just being flooded out. We needed help because it was ruining the, the farm. And the salmon couldn't cut them up for many years there. We used to have a lot of salmon and it was just right down to nothing. Within about three months of buying the property, we had a major flood. Where I'm standing here would have been four feet of water over my head. So that was kind of a wake up call and that we have really an obligation to somehow coexist in this floodplain with the river and with the agricultural ditches or sloughs. We had, I believe, 81 acres of crab buffer uh, along two miles of the Skykomish River on the north side of the property and then on about the same length of the Haskell Slough and I wanted the buffers as a way of protecting that piece of property. One of the best things that streamside landowners can do is protect the native trees and shrubs that are growing along their streamside property or their river. If it's the case where that forest doesn't currently exist, this is where the conservation district can really help out. We can bring the funding and the technical resources and oftentimes the manual labor to help you get those projects in the ground. The Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program is helping to pay for replacing native trees and shrubs, but you're also providing a, um, an incentive payment back to the landowner for, to compensate them for taking their land out of production. And with that check, which comes once a year, I bought a couple tractors, and there's no crop that you can raise that I know of that'll have a return as, as great as a crep buffer. I'm a real advocate for crep. So this is what a healthy riparian buffer looks like. Um, it's very messy to our eyes. It's, it's very complex and there's a lot of places for animals to hide and to get to food and everything else that are provided by riparian buffers. We've got a lot of different sized trees. We've got big tall trees overhanging and they provide shade to, to prevent um, sunlight from coming down and keep the water cool. We also have a lot of complex things that would have fallen in. We've got roots that are holding the banks back and they're all different sizes and they have different rooting depths and everything else is very helpful for banks. Due to a lack of trees on a lot of streams in the area providing shade, Water temperatures in the summer get too high for fish to survive. It can hinder their ability to breathe. It can make it more difficult for them to hunt. And if the temperatures get high enough, it can even kill them. The salmon in particular rely on cool, clean water to survive. Salmon go out to the ocean for much of their lives and then come back to lay their eggs. And they need clean gravel, they need cool water, um, and the healthy vegetation along the streams helps keep that cycle going. Erosion is a natural process and it's a healthy process for streams and rivers. With the removal of a streamside forest though, we often see that erosion is happening a lot faster. The best thing that we recommend is to plant a streamside buffer. That'll help slow down erosion. If you can get it planted into trees, there's a major benefit whenever there's a flood because 
it ends up doing a thing called levee building, which is where, where the water starts slowing down as it goes over the top of the banks and those trees, other vegetation slows down the water and it starts dropping its bed load and eventually you're having uh, not just a buffer but you end up with with the levee with it with, along the sides of the river. Vegetated buffers on streams actually act like a sponge um, so all of these pollutants that were um, coming in from stormwater runoff, your heavy metals and pesticides and fertilizers, uh, fecal coliform bacteria, um, that vegetation just acts like a sponge and just catches it and just soaks it all up and helps filter it from getting into the stream. We find a lot of invasive species coming in and they're usually vegetation. And so this vegetation is, can be reed canary grass or blackberry or anything that is not from around here and they can outcompete native vegetation. What we can do at the Conservation District is help you figure out a way to reduce that vegetation to the point where we can come back in and replant with, with uh, native trees and shrubs. Rivers and streams are uh, natural transportation highways. One of the important things that our streams in the Northwest move is large woody debris or large wood. It will encourage pools where fish can go and hide either during high water events, flood events. In the summer, those pools are deeper and often colder, so little fish will hang out in there. The trees that we plant now are in anywhere from 100 or more years going to fall into the stream and provide large wood to the stream for all those important reasons, including fish habitat. Streamside landowners have a lot of challenges they face living along the water, and one of those is beavers. This is a beaver pond here. A lot of landowners call and say, the beavers are cutting down my trees, or they're flooding their pasture, or their septic system, and they want to know what to do about it. But beavers also provide a lot of benefits to the landscape. They hold water, slow it down, and let the water infiltrate into the groundwater. That reduces flooding downstream, especially in the face of climate change when we're going to see increasing flood events and more water and rain during the winter months. Beaver ponds provide a perfect place to hold that water and help mitigate the effects of that downstream. It had just gotten completely overgrown with um, invasive blackberry, uh, Japanese knotweed, kind of all the, the natural culprits. Well, see, because the, see the blackberry still up there? Wow. So the water would completely jump the bank um, and then flood out two of our neighbors. The conservation district has provided us with all the um, equipment that we've needed. We had to take out huge amounts of all the non-native stuff. Then they provided all the new plants, all the native plants, and guided us on where to plant things. And, and things have taken off. It, it looks real good. Working with Snohomish Conservation District has been great. We've had record, record rains this year, um, and the houses have not flooded out. Working with the conservation district on the buffer has been you know, pretty painless, always able to answer questions, and they really helped set up this size of buffer, kind of diversify it, how to plant it, about a dozen different species of trees. Now after conservation has taken the, the culverts out, the creek stayed in its banks and, and flowed, and our field became much drier. I feel very blessed, very happy. We are getting salmon back again. <clears throat> well, you hear that red-tailed hawk screaming behind you? That's one of the changes. There has been a major increase in, in birds, uh, especially, especially along the river where we have on the riverside a multitude of eagles out here that, that weren't here uh, 10 years ago. Each of us on our own property, we have a responsibility to steward that property, our own parcel, and to do things on the property that take care of and protect our streams and rivers. And if we each do that, our own piece, then collectively at the landscape level, then we'll have healthy streams and rivers and clean water. Like Madon used to say, it's, uh, it's too big to take care of. Uh, you, don't, you don't make any money at it but it's sure a good place to live. <laughs>